Hey everyone, Simon and Alex here with Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to help you achieve more power on your serve. In particular we're going to discuss the five main sources of power on the serve. So that's the leg drive, the shoulder over shoulder, the rotation, the supination and pronation and a fast racket head speed. Now before we get any deeper into the lesson, if you're serious about improving your serve, make sure you click on the link below this video and download our free serve PDF. In the first step, we're gonna cover the shoulder over shoulder. This will allow you to get your power going into the right direction. Now a common error with many players is they think that the power and their force has to be going towards the net, towards the other side of the court. But actually it has to be directed upwards because that's where the ball is, that's the object that you're trying to hit and that's where you have to direct your power. Later on in this video we'll show you a simple drill to help you get more power on your serve. Now if Simon's shoulders are level, he'll be generating all his power from simply his shoulder and his arm. He won't be able to engage the side of his body, he won't be able to engage the obliques of his body, the long muscles that will allow him to get more power and easy power. If you're ever struggling and you feel like you're not getting enough out of your serve, it probably means you're using your arm too much. And imagine when you're feeling a little bit tight or nervous on those big points, if everything that you're getting is out of your hand or your arm or your shoulder, when it's getting a little bit tighter, all of a sudden you're going to start missing because you're dependent on that power source as your main power source. So why not let a bigger muscle group take some of that power and give you more power out of that oblique and the side? and it all starts with the throw. So in this example, Simon's simply gonna direct his power towards the net and he's not gonna go up and use, only use his arm. You can see that it's very tough to generate that lift on the serve. Yes, he's getting some forward momentum, but he's simply not getting enough power. And he's not getting enough lift on that serve. Now we're gonna work on the tilt and it's all gonna start with that toss. So he's gonna throw the ball up and as he's throwing the ball up, He's going to make sure that his left shoulder is above his right shoulder and it's in the line. So he wants to get that L shape between the racket, the elbow and all the way up to the throwing arm. So that L is very important. So it's that trophy position that you know and it's exactly the position you want to be in in order to get that shoulder tilt and now engage this muscle. He should really feel a stretch here in the hip and the side. So now the energy should be directed towards the contact point. So there he got a lot more lift, he got a lot more power, he cleared the net, but it also was relaxed power because the bigger muscle group was taking most of the force. Now before we get onto step two, make sure you press that subscribe button and the notification bell. It'll help you get more lessons from us in the future. The second power source we're gonna discuss is the leg drive. Now, when you think about the serve, you want to hit the ball as high as possible at the highest possible spot. Now, this is only possible if you drive off the court using both legs as equally as well as each other. Now, a common error that a lot of players do is they focus so much on getting in that knee bend, but they actually don't come out of it explosively. What you want to be doing is going down and up as explosively as you can, as quickly as you can, to create that ground force. The kinetic chain on the serve starts from the ground. If you go down and up explosively on that serve, you'll be kick-starting that power in an effortless way and also using the major muscle group in the body, which are the legs. So in this first example, Alex is going into the knee bend, but he isn't driving up. And this is a common error that we see a lot of players doing. They stay down, so they've got a really good knee bend, but they don't have that explosive power going into the ball. Now, when you stay in that knee bend position, the longer you stay in that position, the more explosive power you're losing from the leg muscles. The leg muscles and all muscles in the body work best and fire best when you use them in that explosive and elastic way. So a quick rapid fire will help you to produce more power. So in this example, Alex is gonna go down and up as quickly as he can and really drive into that ball because remember from power source one, the point of contact is where all your energy should be directed. Now you can use two different stances on your serve in tennis, the pinpoint and the platform stance. The platform stance is used by players like Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic. This stance allows for maximum rotation through your body, but it also allows you for maximum upwards momentum in order to hit that shot. 
it's a great way to stay balanced and a great way to get that seesaw action with a shoulder over shoulder because you're doing it in a controlled way. Now the platform stance is great for using your legs because it allows you to use both of your legs at the same time. Those players that are struggling with leg drive that are not using the back leg enough and it's a very common issue with many club players, you want to be doing more of a platform stance so that you can start to generate that power from the ground up. Now on your platform stance, you want to have both of your feet on the ground, stationary on the ground, and you want to have them around shoulder width apart. We also have the pinpoint stance used by players like Kevin Anderson, Ivo Karlovic, and John Isner, some of the biggest servers in the world. Now the pinpoint stance is where you start with your feet apart, so roughly around one and a half to two shoulder widths apart, and then the back foot will lift off the court and join the front foot. So as we can see with Alex, he's starting in that wide base, then his back leg will lift off his right, his right foot will lift off and join into that pinpoint stance onto the left leg. Now some players will drag that back foot and other players will lift it. Whichever one works better for you, you can stick to that. Now the major benefit we have with that pinpoint stance is that body momentum. You're starting with your body weight on the front foot, then you transfer onto the back leg, and then as you go into the pinpoint stance, you have that massive weight shift. So you're getting a lot of power from that body transfer upwards and into the court. Now normally when you use the pinpoint stance, you'll throw the ball slightly further inside the court and land further inside because of that body momentum. Now, if you use that pinpoint stance, make sure you're using your back leg to drive as well as the front leg. Now, often players will go into that front leg too early and the back leg ends up dying. So make sure that that right leg is joining together in that pinpoint stance, but you're driving with both legs up into the contact point. The next step is the power of rotation. This is when you separate your shoulders from your hips and your hips from your feet. Now the way it looks is when you're throwing the ball up and it's, it's helped by your legs, by that leg drive, by going down, you're now able to release your hip so you can turn and wind your body up a lot more. Now when I throw the ball, I want to get that left shoulder turning like this where I'm showing a little bit of my back towards my opponent. I don't want to simply be throwing the ball up like this where I have no turn that rotational power, you store the energy in your body that you're able to release up and forward into contact. So first the shoulder turns against the hip, then the hip goes down and turns as well. So not only am I showing my back, but I'm also sticking my hip out and forward into the court. This gives me that maximum rotation and allows me to get more power more storage of power in my body so that I can release it into contact. The stance that you use will determine how much of that rotational power you're able to achieve. When you use the platform stance, you're able to go down and turn your body a lot more against your feet. When you're in pinpoint stance, what you lack in that rotation, you'll get with the forward body momentum. So it's a lot more difficult to turn your body in that pinpoint stance, but it's not unachievable. So you can still do a nice rotation in pinpoint stance, but you'll have slightly less of it compared to the platform stance. And that's exactly why players like Pete Sampras and Roger Federer have such great serves and why they use it to such great effect. Now, the next power source we're gonna speak about is supination and pronation. So during that contact point, we wanna have a fast racket. We wanna create that racket head speed. So by using pronation during the point of contact, we're able to keep our racket moving quickly through that zone. Now prior to contact, if you're using a continental grip, you should have your racket on edge, leading with the side of the racket towards the ball. Now in this position, my palm is facing my head. So in this position here, I'm now in a supinated position. I start to pronate when I'm going towards the point of contact. So my palm goes from my head towards the ball. So this part I'm already pronating. And then after I make contact, I pronate fully by turning the palm away from my head. So prior to contact, palm is facing the head. Contact point, palm is facing forward. And then after contact, palm is facing the right side of the court. And with the racket, it will look like this. So supination here, pronating into contact, 
full pronation all the way out. And the quicker we can achieve this, the quicker we can achieve this supination to pronation action, the more power we'll get through that contact zone. Now we use supination and pronation on all three serves, the flat, slice, and the kick. But the angle of the strings will change slightly on all three. But we're still going to use that full range of motion from here to here and then all the way out. Now if I isolate just that motion, I can still generate quite a lot of power just from that forearm rotation. So the pronation during that point of contact. So I'm not using my hips there, I'm not using my rotation, I'm not using the leg drive, I'm simply using that pronation and I can achieve quite a lot of power if I work on that motion. Now step five is all about creating a fast racket head speed. The first four steps were all working towards it and this is the final element. It's all about getting that racket traveling through the air as fast as possible into contact. So the last segment of this is your arm. You need to have a continuous motion in order to achieve a fast stroke. You need to allow the arm to go back and through contact without any stopping. A common error for many players around the world is there's a break in that fluid motion and that's where they lose most of their power. Now one of the most common errors in breaking momentum in the serve is stopping in that trophy position. If you hold that position for too long, you'll be unable to generate the power needed and unable to carry the momentum through into contact. By pausing in that position for too long, you're losing power that you started to generate through the other segments of your body. Another common error is by stopping the racket when it's in the loop behind position, so behind your back, and then generating the power from there. It's even worse because now you have even less uh, racket head speed, less racket momentum, and you're relying on going only from behind the back. Now having a toss that's too high will make you do that because you'll have to wait for the ball to come down and a lot of players will wait in this position. This is equivalent to you starting in that position and simply throwing the ball up and then hitting it. You're not going to gain anything by doing all of the other parts that you've done in the serve. So in order to get all the segments working together, everything synchronized, you need to get the timing right of your toss but also have that smooth motion with your arm and through contact. Remember, you're not stopping at the end of the contact, so you're not stopping after you've hit the shot. You're allowing the arm to continue through naturally to the left side of your body. Now I can have the same service motion, but using different speeds. So if I go through my motion very labored and very slow all the way through, I'm not actually creating that momentum. But I, if I start off quite slow, gaining that rhythm, and as I get into the trophy position, I speed up. So that slow to fast momentum, that will help me to generate that effortless racket head speed. So slow to fast. So slow here, but then speeding up and driving into the point of contact, creating that power. Now in order to generate more power with that throwing motion, Alex is simply going to be throwing a tennis ball. But instead of throwing it forward, he's going to pick the ball up by dipping his right shoulder, his left shoulder comes up now, and his energy on that throw will be up over the net. So instead of throwing it forward, he's throwing it upwards and forwards. So he's picking up the ball, he's getting into that power position and throwing. Once again, dipping the back shoulder and throw. Now notice he's not driving with his legs. He's bending the legs, but he's not driving. Now we're going to include the legs so he's going to use that leg drive, that power source from the ground up as well. Now, because he will use his legs more, he'll be able to rotate the hips much more against the feet. So I've placed the cone further behind him. Now he'll get that rotational power as well as that shoulder over shoulder power. So he's rotating the shoulders, he's turning the shoulders, and he's also having that shoulder over shoulder motion during the throw. Now we're going to get Alex driving off the court with his legs. He's not going to stay in that knee bend. He's going down, picking up the ball and throwing it explosively. Off we go. So down and up. It's going down, he's going up. Down, up. Now notice when he gets into that power position, he has a bent elbow. 
What we don't want to do is pick up the ball and do a cricket bowl. We want to make sure that we have that bent elbow to around the 90 degree angle. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you've enjoyed it and learned something new. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a comment under the video. Let us know how you're getting on with the serve. And of course, share it with your friends and anyone who might benefit. This helps us grow the channel and produce more videos like this for you in the future. All the best, Simon and Alex. See you soon.